What up everyone, this is the Twice Over Film Club and I'm your host Faraz. Today we got our no spoiler preview for Nomadland. Our full discussion will be out next week. In the meantime, get this watch in, it's available to stream on Hulu. This did win the Golden Globe for Best Director and Best Picture for Drama. If you're interested in other movies that were considered for awards at the Golden Globes, we have episodes on Mank, Sound of Metal, Minari, and Judas and the Black Messiah out, so check all of them out. Make sure you're following us at the Twice Over on all the socials to keep up with what we're watching and reach out if you have any movie suggestions for us. All right, this one is with myself, Fahad, and Yusuf. What are we recording? We're recording our voices. For what movie? We are going to be talking about Nomadland. Fahad and Yusuf, what's up, guys? What up? Uh, I'm not ready. I'm never ready. You guys always surprise me with the introduction. Anyways, hi. <laughs> <laughs> So we're reviewing a Oscar bait movie today. It, it <laughs> won the Golden Globes. Best picture. Tonight. But yeah. Best picture, uh, best director. Best it won director best director too. too? Yeah, buddy. Chloe Zhao. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, I've, I, have you guys know her? You guys, I've never heard of her before, to be honest. Yep, me neither. When I saw the name, I was like, I have no idea who that is. Uh, looked her up. Um, did not recognize really any of her movies the writer sounds familiar but i don't remember i definitely didn't watch it that's too generic the writer i mean i mean what was that nicholas cage movie knight rider or am i making that up (laughs) i mean you know what i mean it just you could be referring to anything what if she did knight rider with nicholas cage um that would be amazing uh, let's see. Oh, she's just wait. It says Chinese film director. Is she really Chinese film director, or is she Chinese American film director? That is, I believe a good Chinese question. American. Also, I was talking about Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage, not Knight Rider, which was like <laughs> a show in like like three decades ago. Anyways, um, I remember Ghost Rider now. <laughs> these are very important details. I just I don't I don't want to I don't want to attribute the wrong movie to Chloe Zhao here. Yeah, I mean, it looks like she did a few shorts in t- between 2008 and 2011. She did shorts. And then she started doing full feature films. And she's got a movie due for release in 2021, Eternals. And that that is an MCU movie, right? That's a superhero movie. So It's yeah. a Marvel movie. Wow, yeah, she's okay. just, I mean, it's it's just an interesting career trajectory because, yeah, she seems to be an indie darling. And now she's on to Marvel movies. Right. And she's only done, you know, she's only got three movies credited to her to this point, right? As director. Um, Three full feature, yeah. Right. Yeah, full feature, I should say, right? Um, Much more going on in the the film festivals. Um, But yeah, that's kind of an interesting... You just... You don't expect that transition that quickly all the time, I guess. So, um, but yeah, that's cool. I mean... We don't know if she'll win the Academy Awards, but I mean, the fact that she won... Best director and the uh, the film also won best picture for the Golden Globes. Is... Can can we qualify this win? Can we say that it was a weak movie year? Yeah, I... why not? Because it was. <laughs> well, I think it's early to say that because every year there's that conversation. Uh-huh. But like the you know the entire award season is a lot about momentum, right? Um, so like I don't yeah. know, like I haven't seen enough of the movies to say for sure it's a weak movie year. And at the same time. Um, it very well may be, but I, I don't think we've gotten the full landscape of what people are going to say about this cycle uh, until we get like all the way through to the Oscars, I feel like. So, um, but yeah, maybe it may be, it may be a week. When, movie year. Uh, when are the uh, Oscars? Is it like in a month or so? Well, they're they're COVID delayed like everything else in life, right? Yeah. So um, I think. Oh, April 25th. April 25th. So it's. About a month later than it usually is, right? No, I think almost two months, man. I think usually... Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and I think they're doing kind of a condensed thing with in terms of when nominations are going to be finalized uh, and then how much time is, is left before the Oscars. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be pretty, pretty tight there. Um, but yeah, that's I mean, that's that's a little bit later than what we would expect. I don't think they shifted. Actually, no, they did shift the the window for eligibility as well yeah. i think with that mm. and that was that was simply to get some movies that were not able to get their you know their theater releases in basically you know that there was a lot of delays for everyone so they just delayed that timeline too makes sense i think that's how uh judas and the black messiah qualified this movie 
Um, I guess this movie's actually been out similar to Minari. Like, it's been out in, like, festivals, but uh, publicly available. Uh, it's only this year. Okay. So, this movie is adapted from a book, right? Yeah. Correct, Have yeah. y'all read it? No, we didn't. Did, this is not book club. This is film club. <laughs> oh, I forgot what club I was I'm told in. there would be no right. reading. Um <laughs> No, yeah, I, 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 have you read it? I haven't, I haven't read it. I had not heard of it until, until this, this movie came out. This movie, no. Yeah, until the end of the movie when I was like, oh, based off this screen, like the screenplay written for the. Uh... Yeah, it's a 2017 book, um, and it looks like it did win some awards. You know, that's kind of. I feel like the book I would like more than I like this movie. I would agree with that sentiment because. There are a lot of interesting characters, which a movie doesn't have enough time to explore, right? Yeah. Um, it's not the right format to explore the inner lives of characters. And um, I think the term you use, Fahad, is very apt and correct, because this is Oscar bait. I think, Yusuf, when you mentioned it, that this won Best Picture last night, I mean, like it, again, my, my, my thing was, like, it didn't surprise me. It's like the right balance of boring and artsy that it would win. Mm. Yeah, sounds like it, I'm hating on it, but again, I think it's because there's there are definitely good moments in this movie and good things about this film, and we're gonna talk about all of that. But, but but sometimes you can just look at the movie and you can say based on kind of the correct technical term is the vibe. Um, <laughs> it, it just it feels like they picked this movie thinking like, hey, this is gonna be like an artsy film that you know yeah. we can kind of you know you you can build around this type of. Of uh, you know the the nonfiction book, so you know it just you have enough material there, and you think, okay, I think I can build a nice screenplay around that and build an artsy film, and I, that's not a bad thing. I, I shouldn't say that's it a bad thing, yeah. but but a, as you get into award season, I, it just you, you you expect these kind of movies to kind of float to the to the top, right? Um, interestingly enough, Francis Mc the the book was optioned by Francis McDormand and Peter Spears, so I, I guess. Frances McDormand was involved, not, you know, brought on as part of the cast necessarily, but kind of one of the drivers of making this film, or at least, mm-hmm. you know, choosing yeah. to get the film made. Yep, yep. I think she's also credited as a producer. Okay, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's just interesting to me. I, I assume that she wanted the role from, you know, reading the book or whatever then, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually, there's there's a documentary film about this movie as well called Camper Force, um, or not a documentary about the film, a documentary about the same subject matter as the book, which now this uh, is a second, uh, you know, this is a second version of that. And this is obviously not a documentary, uh, but it, it it's it's based on a nonfiction book. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. I, I just want to say Frances McDormand, she, she's now played a bunch of excellent Midwestern characters. And um, this is just not, another one, right? Yeah, and we'll probably talk about this when we get into her acting or the acting in general. But I, I guess I'm not too familiar with her outside of like uh, comedy. Fargo, roles. Uh, not just Fargo, but I guess any Coen Brother movies. I think she was in uh, Burn After Reading. Uh, what else How about have I seen her in? Three Billboards Outside. Uh, yeah, that movie, and then she was also in Almost Famous, right? We did that. Um, yeah. but like she's always played like a what felt like a very like a strong woman who's funny. Um. I guess in this movie she's still a strong woman, but it's uh, not really funny. Wow, yeah. shot. <laughs> it's a, it's somewhat of a tragic movie. Uh, I, I probably disagree with that. I also wanted to ask you guys. I mean, you guys reviewed Into the Wild uh, before, right? Mm-hmm. Or the, you know, it. I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna say there's any similarities necessarily, but just subject matter wise, did you guys have? Did you guys see? Did you guys feel like there were parallels there? Um, coming sure. in, coming yeah. into the movie, even not even like after you watched it, but just based on kind of the mm-hmm. setup. Sure, yep. the story of Into the Wild and the movie, they both explore people on the margins of society, and this is what this movie is about, right? A uh, generation of older people who are um, living like nomads, and then they explore like uh, these communities that just spring up out of nowhere. Into the Wild, I think there was a a whole scene where he visits a yeah, wasteland. He, yeah, he visits a, a couple, right? That's part of, like, that they are, like, they would be characters in this movie. 
I forget the two ca- the couple's name. Like they live out of mm-hmm. outside of their RV. They help him out, um, and they call themselves. I remember this. They call themselves rubber tramps because yeah, 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 exactly on wheels. So there are parallels for sure. Um, it felt like it was this movie could coexist in the same universe as yeah, Into like, the exactly. Wild, at least based yeah. on like the this, setup. And yeah, yeah, I think what you said, just kind of the the community that they that is encountered into the wild um it feels like we're kind of being dropped into that same world um from a very mm-hmm. different perspective like you said in the wild is about uh, you know a, a young kid who just graduated college um and 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 this is about somebody who is kind of uh on the other mm-hmm. side of the hill right and 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 looking backwards at their life so sure um yeah. there was there was that scene uh where Frances mcdormand's character she uh, sits down by a campfire next to this youngish guy um, and he, she asks him, where are your parents? Aren't they going to be worried for you? I felt like that conversation was lifted from Into the Wild. I don't know if it was word for word, verbatim, but it was very m- much similar. Do you remember that? Like, I feel like that th- those same questions were asked of uh, Alexander Supertramp. Let's let's discuss yeah. this after the after the jump. I I, I think it's interesting. Um, but anyways, I think I think having seen into the wild and having liked that movie that is going to form some of my expectations and some of my perception of this movie so i I just think it's probably a nice follow-up you know it's like it's like a sister movie to that kind of if you in in a lot of ways so i mean i think if you saw into the wild maybe you'd want to see this and i'm not even saying whether i thought this movie was good or bad yet but i just think subject matter wise i think this is another uh, jump into that same world and so you know if you, if you like the other the first movie if you like into the wild this is probably something you should just check out and see what you think of it yeah and um, there's definitely similarities with thematic elements that um if that's what you liked about into the wild then perhaps you'll probably like this too into the scores shall we yeah all right uh for the narrative i gave the narrative a 60 i gave it a 55 50 for me nice I was afraid I was going to be way lower than you guys. No, yeah, I think we can agree that it's uh, it's worthy a of a fifty that... to a sixty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's not it's not the most interesting movie in terms of plot or story, but eh, mm-hmm. that's not what what you're coming in to watch this movie for, really. Sure. All right, writing seventy five, eighty, seventy. All right, man, we're close. Yeah. Um, Acting, I give an 80. I give an 85. 70. Themes, I give a 95. I gave it a 85. 80. Aesthetics, 85. 80. 90. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Uh, a little right. flip and flopping. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, so as far as how we rated this movie, right? My, my tally comes out to a 77. Fahad is 81 and Yusuf is 62. <laughs> uh, well, again, this is right. We uh, this is based on what we individually uh, like in a movie. Yusuf uh-huh. really likes the narrative to be or considers the narrative to be, be a very important element of the film. And that was also his lowest score. That's probably right. what's driving his score down. Yes. Yeah, so- and also note, like these are our individual tallies based on our individual scores. When you see the scores on the website, it's an average of our three for each element and then weighted ba- based on however you like to see the movie. Right. So, you know, essentially what what the the, three, the final scores that you just gave us for us three, those are by our individual like, you know, flavor profiles, essentially. Right. What we look for in a film uh, and weighting the categories that we care about most uh, the 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 heaviest, right, and the ones mm-hmm. that we don't care about the least. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I gave a ninety for aesthetics, but aesthetics is not very high up on my list. So yeah. that just doesn't help my score that much. And I think that's correct because I can appreciate that the aesthetics are very good, and also say that's just not something that I care about in a film. So I'm not going to, uh, I I shouldn't see a movie rated very highly just because it has good aesthetics. Um, in in a holistic sense, it shouldn't have a high rating for me, right? So, yeah. um, and, and the same goes for each of our scores. So I think, I mean, I think that makes sense. And I knew, like, when as we went down our scores, we were pretty close most of the way, right? We are, yeah. But we're, the, we're within uh, ten for every single one. And yet, my total score, ju- you know, drops into this valley and ends up at a sixty-two. Yeah. Um, well, except for themes, it's a fifteen-point difference. 
that, that so yeah interestingly enough i mean i just i feel like we can agree on a lot of the elements of this film and we feel very differently about the film nonetheless i think so yeah um and again i don't think it's gonna be uh that surprising to people who look it up on other websites if you were to look at imdb the audience score is way lower than what you see for metacritic so like 93 and 7.6 right metacritic's 94 wow oh it's 94 yeah that's usually the one i go off of as that's the, i mean that's the critical i mean yeah and same thing on Rotten tomatoes the tomato yeah. meter is at 94 versus audience being 15 points lower at 79 so yeah those aren't really capturing obviously everything our scores are a little more specific so we're going to talk about it in more detail thanks for listening to this production of the twice over if you enjoyed this episode consider subscribing and sharing it with a friend want to see what your tally is check out the twiceover.com all the movies we've done are listed there as well as what we're watching for the current week follow us at the twice over on twitter instagram and facebook where you can leave us any suggestions feedback or comments and if you're about it you can also support us on patreon the music you hear on this podcast is from amerigo gazaway you can find his work on bandcamp and spotify